Welcome to Anime Lore Unveiled, the YouTube channel that uncovers the hidden cultural and mythological depths of your favorite anime characters. We're your one-stop destination for all things anime, from the origins of Naruto's Rasengan to the cultural symbolism in Spirited Away. If you're a newcomer, we're thrilled to have you here. If you're a returning viewer, we're glad to see you back. We've got a lot of exciting content lined up for you, so make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications turned on. Don't forget to chidori the like button and drop a comment about your favorite anime character and why you love them. Your input helps us create content that you enjoy. Now, let's dive into the world of anime lore and unveil the fascinating connections between anime, culture, and mythology. Have you ever wondered where your favorite anime characters get their incredible powers and intriguing backstories? Welcome fellow anime enthusiasts and curious minds alike to an exploration of how culture and mythology shape our beloved characters. In the vast universe of anime, creators often draw inspiration from their rich cultural heritage, weaving intricate narratives that resonate with us on a profound level. Today, we're embarking on a fascinating journey, delving into the cultural roots and mythological origins of some iconic anime characters. We'll explore how these elements not only influence their design and abilities, but also add depth and meaning to their story arcs. You'll discover how figures from Shinto mythology find their way into Naruto, or how historical events shape the narrative of Ruruni Kenshin. You'll see anime in a whole new light after this deep dive. So buckle up as we dive deep into the world of anime lore and its ties to culture and mythology. Our first stop is the exciting world of mythology a treasure trove of inspiration for anime creators. Let's start with a character who's not just a favorite among Naruto fans, but a significant figure in Shinto mythology, Amaterasu. In the Naruto universe, Amaterasu is an inextinguishable black fire used by the Uchiha clan, specifically Itachi and later Sasuke. But did you know that the name Amaterasu is derived from the Shinto sun goddess, Amaterasu Omikami? She is the goddess of the sun and the universe, the embodiment of light and warmth, quite the contrast to the dark, destructive fire in Naruto. This ironic twist adds depth to the character narrative, using a symbol of life and warmth as a deadly weapon. Shifting from the light of the sun to the darkness of death, let's explore the eerie character of Ryuk from Death Note. Ryuk, the Shinigami or the Death God, is not your typical antagonist. He's more of an observer, a chaotic neutral who sets the story in motion. He's the one who drops the death note in the human world out of boredom, leading to the main protagonist, Light Yagami, becoming the vigilante Kira. The concept of Shinigami is deeply rooted in Japanese folklore, often depicted as supernatural spirits or gods associated with death. They guide humans towards death, not causing it directly, much like Ryuk's role in Death Note. He doesn't kill anyone directly with the Death Note, instead, he watches as Light uses it. Ryuk's character design with his wild hair, wide grin, and eerie glowing eyes is a perfect visual representation of these Death Gods, further emphasizing the cultural lore's influence on anime storytelling. The integration of mythology and anime doesn't stop there. It traverses the boundaries of character abilities and roles, influencing their motives, decisions, and their overall journey. It's fascinating to see how these ancient tales are reinterpreted and woven into modern narratives, providing not just unique plot devices, but also adding depth and richness to the characters and the world they live in. In Naruto, the use of the name Amaterasu for a destructive technique prompts viewers to delve deeper into the character's abilities and role within the series. It's a subtle nod to the cultural lore, making the viewing experience more enriching for those aware of these mythological references. Similarly, in Death Note, Ryuk's character design and actions are heavily influenced by the concept of Shinigami, making him a much more complex character than he initially appears. His character serves as a bridge between the human world and the afterlife, a role that's typical of death gods in Japanese folklore. As you can see, mythology is an integral part of anime character development and storytelling. It's a testament to the creativity and depth of thought that goes into creating these captivating worlds and characters. These mythological elements not only shape the characters' identities and roles, but also influence the overarching narrative, making the series more engaging and thought-provoking. History isn't just a subject in school. It's a rich source of inspiration for anime creators. Let's take a journey into the past and see how historical events and periods have influenced some of our favorite anime characters. First, we're stepping back into the Meiji era of Japan, a time of great change and upheaval. It's during this period that we meet Kenshin Himura, 
from Ruruni Kenshin. Kenshin's character is deeply rooted in the historical context of the Meiji Restoration, a time when Japan was transitioning from the feudal era to a more modern society. Kenshin, a former samurai, embodies this shift. Once a lethal assassin during the revolution, he now wields a reverse blade sword, vowing to protect the innocent without taking another life. His character arc reflects the societal changes of the time, as he struggles to find his place in the new world order. The Meiji Restoration also saw the decline of the samurai class, a theme prominent in Kenshin's narrative. His character design, with the iconic cross-shaped scar on his cheek and his traditional samurai attire, serves as a visual representation of a bygone era. The story of Kenshin Himura is not just about one man's redemption but also serves as a commentary on the societal shift during the Meiji era. Now, let's set sail to a different era and a different part of the world. We're heading over to the Viking Age, a time of exploration, conquest, and legendary sagas. This is the backdrop for the anime Vinland Saga, where we meet our protagonist Thorfinn. Thorfinn's journey mirrors the historical Viking exploration. His character is based on Thorfinn Karlsefni, a historical figure who was part of the Viking exploration of North America. He's portrayed as a skilled fighter, a trait common among Vikings, reflecting their warrior culture. However, as the series progresses, Thorfinn's character evolves, mirroring the changing attitudes of the Viking Age. Much like the historical Viking exploration, Thorfinn's journey is not just about conquest, it's about discovery, about understanding different cultures, and about the human spirit's unyielding desire to explore the unknown. His journey, much like the Viking Age itself, is a testament to the indomitable human spirit. And it's this historical backdrop that adds depth and authenticity to Thorfinn's character. In both Ruruni Kenshin and Vinland Saga, the historical influences are not just limited to the characters. They extend to the story arcs, the setting, and even the themes explored in the series. They allow for a more immersive viewing experience transporting us to different eras and providing us with a deeper understanding of the characters and their motivations. These historical influences also serve a broader purpose. They offer a glimpse into different periods in history, helping us understand the societal changes, cultural shifts, and historical events that have shaped our world. Through these characters, we can appreciate how history is not just a collection of dates and events, but a rich tapestry that continues to influence our stories, our cultures, and our lives. Historical events and periods provide a fascinating backdrop for anime characters, adding depth and authenticity to their stories. So the next time you're watching an anime, take a moment to appreciate the historical influences. You'll find that they add a new layer of depth and richness to your viewing experience. Now let's explore how cultural symbols and practices are woven into the fabric of anime. One of the most remarkable examples is the acclaimed Studio Ghibli film, Spirited Away. This film takes us on a journey into a spirit world, steeped in Japanese traditions and beliefs. The spirit world is a cultural symbol, representing the coexistence of the natural and supernatural, a common theme in Japanese folklore. The film's bathhouse, for example, is more than just a setting. It's a symbol of purification, a practice deeply ingrained in Shintoism. The spirits who visit the bathhouse are not merely guests, but kami, or gods, each with their own unique traits and characteristics, reflecting the pantheon of Shinto deities. Spirited Away also explores the concept of respect for nature and the consequences of greed, both of which are fundamental principles in Japanese culture. The transformation of the parents into pigs, the polluted river spirit, and the gold-obsessed no-face are all cautionary tales about the dangers of excessive desire and disrespect for the natural world. Now let's turn to another Studio Ghibli classic, My Neighbor Totoro. This film introduces us to Totoro, a lovable oversized creature who is actually a nature spirit. The concept of nature spirits, or yokai, is deeply rooted in Japanese folklore. These spirits are believed to inhabit everything in nature, from trees and rivers to rocks and mountains. Totoro's character is not just a figment of the imagination, but a symbol of the respect and reverence the Japanese have for nature. The film portrays various cultural practices and beliefs associated with yokai. The small rituals like Mei and Satsuki offering nuts and corn to Totoro are indicative of the Shinto practice of giving offerings to Kami. In My Neighbor Totoro, we also see a fusion of Shinto and Buddhist beliefs. The presence of the Jizo statues, which are traditionally seen as protectors of children in Buddhism, showcases Japan's unique blend of Shinto 
and Buddhist practices. These examples show how anime creators use cultural symbols and practices to enrich their stories and create deeper connections with their audience. It's not just about creating a visually stunning world or a compelling narrative, it's also about infusing the story with cultural elements that resonate with viewers, allowing them to experience and appreciate the richness of the culture from which these stories emerge. By understanding these cultural symbols and practices, we can gain a deeper appreciation of anime. We can see how it is more than just entertainment, but also a medium that carries the essence of a culture, its values, beliefs, and practices. So, next time you watch an anime, pay attention to these elements. You might discover something new, something that adds another layer of depth to your viewing experience. What an exciting journey we've had exploring the cultural influences on anime characters. We've dived deep into the lore of these captivating figures, revealing the intricate tapestry of cultural, historical, and mythological elements that shape their identities. From the fiery prowess of Amaterasu and Naruto, inspired by the Shinto sun goddess, to the chilling presence of Ryuk in Death Note, a character molded from the concept of Shinigami, or death gods in Japanese folklore. We've seen how mythology breathes life into these characters. These mythological origins not only inform their powers and roles, but also add a layer of cultural depth to their narratives. We also explored how history can serve as a powerful muse in character creation. Kenshin Himura from Ruruni Kenshin, steeped in the context of the Meiji Restoration and the Samurai, and Thorfinn from Vinland Saga, a character sculpted by the historical Viking exploration, are testaments to this. History not only shapes these characters but also weaves a rich backdrop for their narratives, adding authenticity and depth to their stories. Cultural symbols and practices too play a pivotal role in anime. From the spirit world of Spirited Away brimming with cultural symbolism to the nature spirit Totoro in My Neighbor Totoro, these elements reflect Japanese beliefs and traditions, making the anime experience more immersive and enriching. Understanding these cultural influences is essential to fully appreciate the complexity and beauty of anime. It deepens our engagement with the stories and characters, enhancing our viewing experience. It's like having a secret key that unlocks a hidden layer of meaning in these captivating tales. Now that you know more about the cultural influences in anime, we encourage you to look for these influences in other anime and share your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow for more insightful anime content. Before we wrap up, we want to remind you to subscribe to Anime Lore Unveiled if you haven't already. We're always thrilled to hear your thoughts, so don't hesitate to comment below. If you found value in this video, show us some love by cheatoring the like button. Every like, comment, and subscription helps us bring you more deep dives into the world of anime. And remember, anime is more than just entertainment. It's a window into a rich culture and history. So keep exploring, keep learning, and keep sharing your insights with us. We look forward to seeing you in the next video where we'll uncover more hidden depths in your favorite anime. Until then, happy anime watching.